Are you ready to unlock your true potential? Introducing 30 Days to Unleash the Lion Within, a revolutionary series that will transform you into the leader God intends you to be. In just 30 days, you embark on a journey of self-discovery and growth. This free resource offers a series of messages, each packed with proven methods to simplify and apply God's word to your life. Inside this series, you'll find practical strategies to unleash your leadership potential. You need to learn how to harness the power of God's wisdom and apply it to your everyday decisions. Discover how to lead with integrity, inspire others, and make a lasting impact. But this just isn't another series. It's a transformative experience that will help you find your purpose, ignite your passion, and unleash the lion within. So visit thelionwithin.us forward slash unleash to claim your free copy of this series. Don't wait any longer. Visit thelionwithin.us forward slash unleash and become the leader God intends you to be. Welcome to The Lion Within Us, a podcast serving Christian men who are hungry to be the leaders God intends you to be. I'm your host, Chris Granger. Let's jump in. All right, guys, it is your meet episode. I'm excited to be here with you. Let's get right into it. So our scripture of the week this week is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8. It says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Well, guys, that verse right there should get you going. So go back, listen to the spiritual kickoff episode. We unpack that verse at length to kind of give you some insight on how you simplify and apply that to your life. And again, if you like the spiritual kickoff, you know, have the, that, that gets you going each and every week. We do this daily within the Line Within Us community. I'd love for you guys to check that out at the linewithin.us. Okay. So now we're going to be talking about today how you can engage your destiny. And what does that actually look like? And I'm, we brought in a guy, his name is Ben Peterson. This is going to be an incredible conversation. You're going, you guys are going to love it. He's full of energy, first and foremost. But he's a founder and CEO of Engage Your Destiny. So this is a nonprofit ministry out there for you military guys out that that are that are listening. What they do is they com- they combat veteran suicide. And they're doing that by equipping the military veterans and their families with spiritual tools. And, and this, these tools are going to help them face the battles that we face. So Ben is a combat, uh, an Army combat veteran. Uh, with eight years of service and he was deployed in Iraq. And I'll tell you what, he, he's, he's got such a passion just for serving others. Uh, he was, uh, uh, he had a huge event in 2020. He did, he founded the Heroes Honor Festival. So this happened at Daytona Speedway. Now uh, they had Toby Keith there. They had Justin Moore, Craig Morgan, Ron DeSantis, all these different, these different huge sponsors, Toyota, Harley Davidson. 35,000 people attended, uh, and, and it really helped around 1,200 v- veterans heal, just that process of healing. And so uh, it's it's such a great just opportunity to talk with him. He's got a, this wonderful ministry now. They're making such a big impact. And uh, so, guys, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. They, they live in Tennessee in a little town called Spring Hill. Uh, he and his wife, his son, uh, and they got a little uh, white lab as well. So just as a, a fun conversation. It gets real. He he says some things, guys, that are just going to hit you right between the eyes. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is not, uh, you know, cupcakes and rainbows types conversations, but you do, you know, click on the line within us for a cupcake and rainbow anyway. So we're going to get into it. Enjoy this conversation with Ben Peterson. All right, Ben, welcome to the line within us. How you doing today, man? Dude, I'm, it's a Monday. We're getting after it. Got to get that liquid, you know, hot black motivation and get it moving, baby. <laughs> that's right. That's right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to the conversation with you for sure. I mean, we'll be digging into your book and, and, and the idea of an engagement of our destiny. But before we do that, man, let's share something yeah. fun about you that uh, maybe not many people know. Uh, well, there's probably, I mean, there's a lot of stories there that I could probably tell. But, you know, what I say, I was I was at church yesterday and some guys were talking about golf. Okay. And I said, I'm, I'm past the point of caring of what other people like, or if I'm trying to fit in or not. And I, and I was just like, I could care less about golf. I hate the game. It's, it's brutal. And I don't, I don't like doing things I suck at. And so I was like, I care about three things in life other than Jesus and my family. Those are the givens, right? Right, right. I care about I, or what I enjoy. I like working out. I like hunting and the Minnesota Vikings. Those oh. are my three fun things, dude. I love to train hard. 
Uh, I love to go hunting. I'm going elk hunting this fall. Uh, I love deer hunting. I love going big game hunting. And I lo- I bleed purple for the Minnesota Vikings. It is a ridiculous, pathetic obsession. I'm a total degenerate about it. And I'm uh, unashamed about it. I love it, bro. I love it. We're, we're going to have to unpack that a little more. So your workout, what type of workouts are you getting into? You know, I've always done kind of different things. I think um, uh, I've, my low back has just started to have some issues. So I've had to move away from squats because right. I've done like a lot of heavy lifting and like CrossFit type stuff. But my wife and I joined a uh, burn boot camp, okay. which there's a lot of women in there. But golly, those women are in better shape than like the majority of men that I meet. But it's uh, they, they do a different workout, workout every time. And so it's like a boot camp kind of like they like today's uh, like a push pull, everything's focused and you do yeah. stations and stuff. And then they have like a, a speed and agility and then they got core conditioning. So it's like 45 minutes. You can drop your kids off. They got a big window. So like your kids can watch you work out. Uh, and so we're super into that right now. So I got my four thirty workout today. I can't wait. That is so awesome, man. It's okay. Yeah, it's it's called burn boot camp. Yeah. And they push you harder than you would ever do like on your own. And I, I train pretty hard, but like I go there and I, and I, every workout I'm like, geez, I would never work out this hard. It's so great. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. So what's your, what's your favorite hunt? I'm curious. You said you're a big hunter. What's the best one you've been on so far? Well, deer, deer hunting is great. You right. know, a, anywhere you do it across the country, if you, you know, Minis- I'm originally from Minnesota right. and you know, the deer hunting in Minnesota is outstanding. Like never really? book. Oh yeah. Never book anything the weekend of, before veterans day, veterans day is to, uh, on a Monday. Okay. That's deer hunter opening weekend. Like never do anything that weekend. Got it. Um, so, uh, obviously there I'm going to, um, I got my first Tennessee. I live in Tennessee. I moved here uh, a couple of years ago. I got my first deer here in Tennessee. Uh, this last winter, a nice, just eight pointer, about yep. 220 pounds. They're not as big as they are in Minnesota, yeah. which is disappointing, but yeah. still a good buck. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going elk hunting in Colorado in October. I got a bunch of guys. Mm-hmm. We got a party that we're going out and we're going to, I'm like, I can't wait. Let's go. Let's see. I it. just want to break. I just want the head and I've already worked out the deal that whoever shoots it, I get to keep the head. Like we made a deal. <laughs> there so. you go, man. And I'll give up shooting it if I get to keep the head. But like, if I have to shoot it and then not get the head, I'll be pissed. So like, it's like, I just want that freaking head on my wall. I have to have it. <laughs> I love it, man. I, I, yeah, I love And Carolina's same, kind of same as similar to Tennessee. Nice deer. The, the bodies just aren't as big, you know, here. Not as big. Yeah. yeah. But, but such, but so fun to kill, man. Oh, so yeah. great. It's just, yeah. I love to hunt. And then, you know, I'm, I'm teaching my daughters is what my son one day he, he's too young right now but the whole honoring the animal afterwards and using it and oh, we're, yeah. you know just we use all the meat i mean it's it's a big totally. part of what we do dude it's a special thing and i think like it doesn't need to be like this weird you know like spiritual thing but like i always put my hand on on the chest of the animal and thank him for his life and right you know always honor it with the meat and like all that kind of stuff dude it's just, it's a special experience it that really I, I think a lot of people <laughs> that grow up in cities or maybe without dads or whatever, like they don't, they don't get that experience that, right. that really connects you to, you know, the, the manliness of hunting and what it really means to have that warrior spirit to go out with other men and hunt. It's so, it's so true, man. And plus just for me, it's the, the time in the woods being still. Yeah. You know, you, you, we, we, we're, we're so busy. You know, and, mm-hmm. and it's so loud. This world is mm-hmm. so loud, bro. So mm-hmm. just that, that I covet that time. I just love it. Yeah. Amen. Amen, bro. Well, let's, let's kind of get into it. I mean, I love to hear a little bit about your backstory as well, about your, I, I you understand are. you not want to talk about the Vikings. I don't take it personally, <laughs> but Hey, you know, you know, I know they're not, I know they haven't been great in a while, but geez, you know, you kind of went over that one a little bit. I'm a little offended. Yeah, I did playing. skip right by that one, bro. So uh, <laughs> my, my bad on that one, you know, shout out to Randy Moss, but you know, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, know. that was a long time ago. But anyway, let's get into it. <laughs> well, I just love to hear a little bit about your, your, your personal journey. Cause I know that really, really impacted so much of you writing this book so that you kind of get us get us up to speed here yeah you know one, one of my favorite quotes um that is uh set the tone for our ministry to the military our active duty soldiers and for you know our work with veterans has been uh it's a quote by david mccullough and it says that history is who we are and why we are the way we are mm. um and that is that has really been a foundation for my life and learning about what holds me back from becoming the man that god has called me to be Um, and so, you know, in our lives, you know, uh, man, I got radically saved by Jesus when I was like 17 years old. I got touched by the Holy spirit when I was 20. And yet 
all throughout my twenties and into my thirties, like I struggled so much with my identity and with sin and sexual sin. And, um, there were so many issues that would come up with addiction and with alcohol and like always never feeling okay. And always being defined by my performance and how hard I worked or being defined by, you know, um, you know, how I did or didn't do in my Christian walk. And then from there, like out of frustration, like, man, I, I can never do anything right. So I'm going to lay on the couch and jerk off and I'm going to freaking, mm-hmm. you know, eat the horrible food and just try to fill this like hole in my soul. Mm-hmm. And, and it didn't matter how hard I pursued Jesus, how much I read the word, like, man, I just kept struggling with all this identity stuff. Um, and it really wasn't until, you know, I got married and I married a spiritual Christian uh, mental health, emotional health gangster who's like has zero tolerance for bad emotional health, which mm-hmm. was not what I wanted, but was what I needed. She needed. And, uh, and my, my wife and I went on, you know, we've been on a three year journey that has created more healing and understanding, um, why, why we are the way we are. And, you know, I, yeah, I went to combat when I was 21, uh, saw some horrific things in the army and, that has very little to do with the issues uh, that, that were presenting in my life. And, and for a lot of veterans, what's, what's fascinating uh, about 9-11, they did this massive study around 9-11, mm-hmm. uh, you know, survivors. And they found that um, people that experienced the trauma of 9-11 that came home to emotionally healthy homes where there was secure attachment, which meant it was not fear or avoidance that was creating the attachment in the family, but it was love and acceptance um, that, that, and the word acceptance can get a little funny, but it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to accept what you're going through, like emotionally. And I'm not going to use fear, or anger, or rage in order to get what I want out of you. Sure. I'm going to parent you through things and parent your emotions. You tracking? Exactly. Um, and the people that went into those kind of, um, situations, they, they recovered very well, uh, emotionally, um, from, and, and traumatically from 9-11. But those that went back to emotionally unhealthy homes where there was, you know, uh, fear, anger, alcoholism, like any of that kind of stuff, they dramatically struggled with PTSD from those experiences. And I think we, we forget that, you know, people and and humans have been in combat and have been experiencing horrific things for thousands and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And yet now we have these massive issues with counseling, massive issues with PTSD, massive issues with, um, you know, all of these, all of these mental health issues. And yet the true shifts that have taken place in our culture are the breakdown of the family unit. Half of Gen Z is growing up in a fatherless home. Um, and you also have this issue with secure attachment and how you are emotionally connecting with your parental figures. Mm-hmm. Um, and through the methods of, Hey, I, you know, I want to get more sleep. So I'm just going to let you cry until you go to sleep. Or, you know, I'm going to uh, use discipline in a way that's going to bring fear into this home, or I'm going to be absent, not available. All of these create horrific issues in the building blocks of the child, which then um, gets that that child into a position where they're always in a place of fear. And so to like tie a bow on this, um, that was my childhood. My childhood was filled with horrific fear Mm. and that my dad was a rage. And my parents would fight for hours at a time. Um, and I grew up feeling incredibly alone and unsafe. Mm-hmm. And that put a unquenchable need in me to feel safe. And safety when you're a child means love. We equate love as safety. And so then from there, I'm just t- constantly trying to fill my life with performance and fill in the blank. And I could go on and on. Mm-hmm. And that fear as you're speaking about, one thing I, I talk with the guys about all the time is that fear paralyzes. And it keeps us from from taking any action whatsoever. You know, we can't engage anything because we're we're just stuck. And it sounds like that you 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 hit it head on when you said it. It really starts to break down of the family unit, and so much not having strong Christian men or strong men in general in the mm-hmm. home, and because they're going to be able to put that that safety net of love in place. And man, when it's not there, this is what you see happening. It's all around us for sure. Yeah. And, and I think like, you know, for, for guys that are out there, um, listening to this and maybe you're in that parental role right now and you're struggling a little bit or you know that you've made some mistakes. What, what they're, what the kind of research is showing is that if you're 50% of the time, like 50% of the time you repair in a great way, which means like, Hey, your kids spout off, you get angry, but you come back and you repair and you apologize and you love on them. 
or they show up and they throw a tantrum or whatever, and you don't lose it on them, but you love on them and you walk through those emotions with them. You don't try to shut them down. If you're doing that half the time, mm-hmm. dude, you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so, you know, parenting and, and especially for the dads out there that are listening to this, God is not, you know, not looking for, for perfection. Right. We're looking for a majority of the time. And I, I remember being in school as a kid and I remember I would get like D's and C's and like in the sixties and seventies, let's say it was a hundred question test and I'd get like 65 and get a D. I'm like, dude, I got 65 answers, right? Right. <laughs> like 65 answers were, were correct. Like, give me a freaking break. Right. So anyways, that's. Guys, don't be so hard on yourself. Well, I think some of it comes down to, man, it's just, guys, we, we, we're our worst critic and we don't give ourselves grace at all because we feel like we have to be, you know, perfection, perfectionist at all times when, when, man, when leading our families. And man, that's a, it's an impossible standard to live up to. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I was at a bonfire on uh, Saturday with a group of guys and we've kind of started up this like every other week. We're going to meet up after we put the kids down and do a bonfire. And it's just been unbelievable. Like to build that tribe, it kind of has that C.S. Lewis, the inklings kind of gathering yeah, feeling of like these men that are getting together and, and we just love it. And, um, but we were, we were talking about, um, you know, how hard we are on ourselves and Andy, who's kind of the guy who organized it. He asked the question and you want us all go around and say, what are you proud of mm-hmm. in this last season of your life? And we all were like immediately, well, I, I, I just kind of think about what I'm not proud of. Right. And, uh, but it was so powerful for us to go through and, and focus on the things and the wins in our lives that we're proud of. Um, and I think that kind of helped like move out of that, that intense critic. And so, you know, even as an exercise right now, like, Dude, Chris, what are you proud of in this this last three months of your life? What's something you're proud of? I, mean, I, I think for me, it's it's seeing the growth of uh, my son. You know, mm-hmm. he's, he's how old he's is he? Nineteen, twenty months, and just seeing wow. him. Uh, you know, I've been building a playhouse, and now he he's right there handing me screws, and he just oh. you know he's just there, right? And, he, and I just that time, you know, I, I'm. I'm proud of the progress on the playhouse, but also just the time of being able to spend with intentionally with, with the family. Yeah. Amen. I got to know more about the the mm. bonfire though, bro. I haven't heard anybody mention that. I used to do bonfires all the time. I mean, yeah. and I'm curious how that idea even got started. What, so you guys do it every week? I mean, is this every a, other week? Every so other my week. buddy, yeah, my buddy Andy was just like, dude, I need guys. Yeah. And, you know, in our world today, I, I think that the the impact of the phone and the lack of emotional capacity we have, because what is what is cloud like our our brains only have so much capacity. Pe- people think that or they don't think about it, don't even put any thought to it, that brains are not supercomputers. They can't just take in endless amounts of information. Mm-hmm. And so 10 percent of your brain is your conscious brain. It's what you and I are using to talk to each other right now. But 90 percent of the power of our brain is our subconscious which is most highly activated when we're not actively thinking Mm -hmm. when we're not actively like doing. And that's why, I mean, even like uh, I know Thomas Edison, he would sit in his chair in his recliner, he would lean back and he would um, have a metal plate like on the ground and he would go and he would circle ball bearings and he would just sit and turn them. And he would sit there for an hour, hour and a half until he would start to doze off. And then when he dropped the ball bearings, like, and they hit the plate, it would like startle him out of his thing and he would have a new idea. And so he was able just to figure out that his greatest ideas came when he wasn't thinking. Well, what do we do every moment that we have that has, you know, white space in it? We pick up the phone and do something on it. Uh-huh. It's so stupid. And I'm, I'm constantly like challenging myself, like, dude, don't pick that thing up because we're just looking for a hit of dopamine. It feels good. Yeah. But it's inherently making us stupider because we don't sit and think. We don't sit and just think and play with ideas and, and, and process through things. And so, you know, Andy, he's sitting there and he's just like, dude, you know, I'm, I'm isolated. I'm lonely, you know, and and I have all these friends. But like, you know, I don't I don't really spend time with them. And um, and that's where he came up with the idea of the bonfire of like every two weeks at my house, we're going to have a bonfire. We're going to make some queso dip or like whatever. And right. I'll have some waters out. You guys bring whatever you want if you want cigars or whatever. And we're just going to sit around and we're going to hang out and talk. And I went there, you know, the first time just kind of being like, oh, you know, it's just another guy's thing, whatever, you know, and yeah, and it ended up just being this incredibly powerful time. And and he asked um, he asked two pointed questions. Um, One was, what are you proud of? And the other one was, what do you need? Mm. Like in this season of life, what do you need? Mm. And those were the only two questions. And I mean, that those two questions sustained 
seven guys for two and a half, three hours. Just sit around. There was not one cell phone out and just staring at a fire. Yeah. And it was just like, man, there's, there's, there's something to this. 100% um, or something to it, that. Yeah. And so now like, man, I'm thinking about like my church. I'm thinking about guys like, man, I want to be having a bonfire like every Saturday night, just getting, getting guys together to sit around and focus on, yeah. you know, think about Think about the focus we put on screens. It's like, no, let's look into the, the hearth of the fire. Right. And, and let that illuminate our minds um, of what's already in there that, that there's secrets we can't even imagine. Man, that is baller. So yeah, he does this on Saturday nights is when y'all typically do it every other Saturday. Help, help put the kids down, you know, yep. show up around seven thirty, eight o'clock, support the wife. And then it's your time. Bam, baller. Go. Baller. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look, we're going to take our first break, guys. We're going to be right back. I don't know about you, but I used to find Mondays really rough. I would find myself trying to reset for work, trying to get my bearing on the family calendar, trying to find time for my own spiritual growth and development. And often I found myself overwhelmed or just flatly ignoring aspects of my life that I know are meaningful to me. What I learned was that if I had immediate access to important and impactful spiritual topics and reflections to start my week, well after the allure of a Sunday sermon has passed, I would set my whole week up to be more meaningful and for the opportunity to make a true impact. If you think that getting such a boost would help your week to get started on the right foot, we would love for you to sign up for the Weekly Roar, which is our newsletter that is produced by The Lion Within Us. Each week, we'll deliver a powerful reflection and practical steps to help you apply scripture with clarity and purpose, all being rooted in light and truth. So in just a few minutes, we hope to arm you with insights for living out biblical leadership with confidence and strength, and maybe even have a little extra bounce in your step. If that sounds useful, head over to thelionwithin.us slash roar to sign up today. That's the lionwithin.us slash R O A R to get your weekly roar today. So Ben, I mean, let's let's keep digging into it. I mean, this whole idea that you of this book, you know, what kind of led you here? Because there were some heavy things you shared in the book. So was this an easy process for you to put this together or did it did it did it cause a lot of work, I guess, to to kind of go back and relive some of those items? You know, I've I've made a ministry out of reliving these items mm -hmm. uh, as as I spend time with soldiers and work with them, you know, on a, on a full time basis. Um, you know, and as you're preparing messages and speaking and preaching and leading Bible studies <laughs> and you're you're organizing and, and cre you know, our, our organization is a very transparent organization where it's like, man, what are you struggling with and, and what is your story? And let's use that to to advance the kingdom in the lives of these young people because they're struggling with the same and more. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I'm very used to using story and the power of story to illustrate a point. Um, and so like, even, you know, just, just to give you an example. So about, I think it was three weeks ago, um, we were at a friend's house. Uh, my son is two and we were, we're in the middle of a kitchen remodel right now. We had a water leak. We're dealing with insurance. It's kind of stressful. We haven't, yeah. we've been without a kitchen for a while now. Right. And I'm talking with my buddy who's extremely good at house projects. I, I, I can work my way around stuff, but this guy like. You know, yeah. he could like do it for a living if he wanted to, even though he doesn't. And we're processing this idea and I'm already a little stressed out and my son's trying to get my attention and I'm not paying attention to him. And he hits me. And, you know, typically if I get a little hit, like it's like, hey, you know, we don't do that, whatever. But his 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 palm hit my nose and then went up and, and hit my eye and he like thwapped it. And I'm telling you, it really hurt. Yeah. Like it, it was extremely painful. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I turned and I yelled at him and I mean, like, and, and I think one of the things that I'm learning, uh, is that, um, my filter for yelling is not the same filter as my pure little sweet two-year-old, nor mm -hmm. my beautiful wife. And so I grew up in a home of screaming where like we would scream to get each other's attention. Like if you're on the downstairs and upstairs, it was scream to get someone's attention, all that kind of stuff. And then screaming for conflict 
Then I joined the army, screaming all the time, yelling, combat, screaming all the time. You know, right. I, I have a very different filter for yelling. Right. And so me yelling at him right in that moment and grabbing him and yelling at him, you know, it freaked out the whole room. That was a fail on my part. Right. right? Um, but then I looked at the room and everyone was looking at me like I was a monster. And 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 I stood there and I was extremely embarrassed. Um, and my wife then comes to the aid of my son, which I then got super offended by because I'm like, he hit me. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And no one's on my side. And so then that made me feel isolated, made me feel shame, like all that kind of stuff. And, you know, my wife and I, like we got into one of those like kind of two day arguments where it's like, I don't know if we can settle this until the next day. And then it was through the next day that we still hadn't settled it. Like, uh -huh. can I get an amen? Right. Uh huh. And we're working through all that. And it finally got to the point where it was like, man, um, I was an only child and I was bullied in high school and I felt completely alone, you know? Um, and that moment brought out this, this deeper, way deeper issue in me right. of feeling isolated and alone and embarrassed. Right. Cause when you get beat on by bullies, like it's embarrassing mm -hmm. and you're not strong enough to stand up to them. Right. right? And so, you know, I wanted to tell that story because it, it, it brings out that the issues that you are dealing with men have so much more to deal with than what you're dealing with in real time. And simply having that revelation and that understanding that there is something greater going on here that the devil is trying to bring out to try to wound you. It's not, it's not that my son hit me and it hurt. It was the aftermath that brought up then deeper wounds that made the situation worse. And Hebrews 11 says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us, the wounds that so easily ensnare us. And let us um, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith mm -hmm. so that we can run this race with endurance that he has set out before us. Mm -hmm. And so often the, the issues that we're dealing with have so little to do with what the actual issue is. Right. And I think that's what I'm trying to get at in my book. That's what I'm trying to help people with. Mm -hmm. where, where and what are the deeper woods, wounds that keep you from engaging hope, engaging freedom, engaging the inner warrior, the leader in you, engaging um, the path that God has for you and, and what is holding you back. And so in each chapter, I kind of take a story from history, whether from World War II or for uh, from like Teddy Roosevelt or just some of these great and incredible men, George Patton, like great and incredible men that founded America or that have been a part of uh, mighty moments in history and learning from them. And then I use stories from my own life yeah. um, to illustrate a point of how you can engage hope, how you can engage freedom, how you can engage the life that God has for you. Because I believe that everybody was created with a specific purpose under heaven. And that when God knew you in your mother's womb, he had a destiny for your life. Mm -hmm. And there are specific gifts and talents that God has given you to uniquely use to further and advance the kingdom. And our journey in life, and I think the great mystery or the great discovery is when a man aligns his gifting, his talents, his anointing with the will of God. Right. And when I think you, when I think I believe that when you put those two things together and they come into alignment, that is when the kingdom of heaven is truly able to come to earth. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, with the same, the two greatest days is when a man is born, and, and the second day is when he finds out why. I mean, and you're, when why you start, you born, you start aligning that to to what God's doing. I mean, it's just it's so incredible. I, 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 so far as even speaking to what drives us, the way we respond is usually not indicative of, of the true issue i go back to several guys i've talked to around pornography and the yeah. ultimate driver there is, is not the women it's we're it's, it's filling another uh, another gap in our in our who we are in our identity so i'm just so thankful that you address this stuff head on man because this, this is this is the type of talk that we need to have on a regular basis uh among christian guys yeah amen I am. I am curious though. I mean, you mentioned you're obviously a go getter, but you put this amazing festival together. I don't, I don't want to like just you know breeze by that. Kind of go walk through the the, the anxiety, the stress, the pressures of putting oh, on something like that, man. Um. Yeah, that was that was something. So in in 2016, 
um, I was walking through uh, our parents' living room, my parents' living room. I was living at home at the time as my dad was was passing away of cancer. He died in uh, just the beginning of 2018. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking through the living room and there's there's no other way to put it, Chris, but I, I had this flash of a vision. Okay. And I saw this massive stadium that was filled with tens of thousands of specifically Vietnam veterans. And then the vision zoomed in on this one Vietnam vet and tears were just streaming down his face as he was healing and he was being welcomed home. And I just, I knew that. I knew that that was his experience from the vision. And then the vision just ended. And like, I saw the stadium, I saw the Vietnam vets, I saw this one vet and it was just, it was just unbelievable. And I knew that God was giving me a very specific vision. I mean, I felt God's presence and I, I wept and I just, I knew I was being shown something. And, you know, a little bit of backstory, um, you know, when I came home from combat, I was met with parades and I was treated like a hero. Like dude, right. it was, it was amazing. And the Vietnam guys, when they came home, I mean, this is such a scar on our history. And even the, the Vietnam uh, Memorial is fashioned and shaped after a scar. It is modeled as a, as a scar on our nation's past in the way that it was handled. And, um, we could get a lot deeper into that, uh, but we don't have to, um, mm -hmm. around the, the whole issue of the Vietnam war and, and what our government was really trying to do. But I digress. Um, when it comes to, uh, these men, they came home to a country completely divided. I mean, JFK had been assassinated. Mm -hmm. Um, Martin Luther King had been assassinated. Uh, Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated, uh, complete, Lack of trust had had had, arose, had arisen among the people in the government. Um, Kent State had taken place where you know National Guardsmen had opened fired on on the people, and and there was a massive rebellion against uh, the establishment and uh, the way that um, the uh, the way that the news was portraying you know soldiers was an absolute. Uh, it was a complete communist takeover. I mean, I might have even hold back. Right. And what's what's fascinating is there is actual evidence of Walter Cronkite visiting specific areas of Vietnam and seeing the humanitarianism, seeing the victory, seeing um, everything in the battle and the, and the ground that had been won. And the next night, he gave an exact opposite report saying destruction, um, you know, savage, you know, soldiers, all this kind of stuff were losing. It, it, it was the exact opposite of what you witnessed. And you can see him on camera making the comments that are that are the antithesis of what he said. And so that polarized people. Sure. And when these soldiers came home who had been drafted, I mean, I have sold I have I have guys I've talked to that had cups of blood, like animal blood thrown on them as they were screamed at that they were baby killers. Um they were advised not to wear their uniforms through the airports the, to change before they got into the airports. Mm -hmm. They um you know were called baby killers, they were spit on and and society did not want to help them. And so Vietnam veterans make up the highest rate of suicides uh, among the veteran population in America in the history of America. And I knew that God was calling me to give them a national welcome home and to give them an experience that they had never had in the history of this country. And um and that's what we did. So on Memorial Day of 2022, we held the largest, biggest, baddest, Jesus-centered American welcome home uh, in the history of this country. And we had over 35,000 people in attendance. We had Toby Keith, Ron DeSantis, Fox News uh, live streamed it to the country. Toyota sponsored it. Um, um, you know, um, we had other, you know, massive sponsors and Harley Davidson, like all these groups got behind this to support. Um, these guys being welcomed home. And it was, it was unbelievable, man. It, it was one of Toby Keith's last shows actually yeah, uh, before he passed away. And it was one of the most incredible days of my life. Yeah, um, I probably shook over 5,000 hands, like gave guys hugs as they cried, you know, on my shoulder. And like our team had to wipe the wonder from our faces. We had never seen such healing in one place at one time in our lives of these guys getting something that they never got. And, um, it was a, it was, the bill was 6 million bucks and uh -huh. that's like what it took to execute something on that scale. And, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. I hired people to help me and, you know, I definitely made a lot of mistakes throughout that experience. Um, I got a, I would say I got a master's or a doctorate in, uh, in events and, uh, as well as, uh, how to run a business. Well, you know, um, made some big mistakes, but you know, we were, um, trusting God for all the finances. And we raised about $4 million, which is amazing for, for that, for that campaign. Right. 
And we needed another 2 million, which we planned to sell in ticket sales. Um, but we sold about half a million dollars in tickets. And um, we were about 1.5 million in debt after that event. Mm. Um, so here I am, like I grew my team from two people to like 27. Um, and now I have to lay everybody off. I have no money in the bank. Sure. I'm $1.5 million in debt. I have people pounding on my door for money. Um, and, um, had to literally just like use credit cards. And I, like I maxed out a goal. I probably put like 800 grand on a gold credit card that had no limit. Oh my gracious. Wow. Just to pay people, just to pay people. And right. I was like, I was like, I, these people did a job for me. I'm not going to not let them get paid. Um, I'll, I'll deal with this. Like I'll carry this burden. Right. Right. Um, so we got everybody paid. Uh, American Express was so good to us. Like we, t- we went and talked to them. We told them our mission and they gave us a super low interest rate. And, um, man, we just, uh, and then now like I- I'm in this place where I have no vision what I'm going to do next. And I've got this mountain of debt and no money. Um, we had to lay off, you know, 25 of our people We're back down to like two people. Right. Um, so you're still no, working through that debt right now. Uh, yeah, we got about 95% of it paid off. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. God is good, man. That's incredible. Through a lot of hard work and a lot of favor, but yeah. Um, so, you know, I was just, I was in a position of, um, experiencing and even coming out of that event. Like I remember this guy, his name is John. And I met him at a, at a Vietnam veteran breakfast and this dude investigated murders and suicides in Vietnam. So like when people would get killed for like, like we're not talking combat. We're talking like this guy is suspected of being murdered by his own people, which happened. There were guys that would kill their own officers if they had a bad officer to try to survive. And then when guys would kill themselves, like this dude went and investigated all of it. Mm -hmm. And this guy had a scowl and, and a face that was just like, you could tell this was one pissed off, bitter man. Right. And sitting and talking with him, you could feel the bitterness after he had gone through all of that and then coming home and, and getting, and this dude got spit on, literally spit in the face. Hmm. Dude, this carried, this guy carried wounds like you wouldn't believe. And I remember seeing John after the event was over. Not even the same person. Really? And he did a video for us. And he just said, the impact that Vietnam has had on my body, on my soul, like on my mind. And he said, this festival healed me. This event changed my life and I can, I can die in peace. Like dude, it was unbelievable. And so, you know, when all of that was over and I'm carrying this debt and I mean, dude, I was in rough shape. Like it took Mm -hmm. everything I had to get through that event Mm -hmm. and it's like climbing Mount Everest and then realizing you got to go all the way back down. Mm. Um, but what I kept coming back to is I did what God told me to do. And if I, if, if that much anguish that I had to go through for over the next year meant all of those guys getting healed, then I would do it again. Hundred percent. And I, I had to, I had to just get to that place mentally mm. and say, you know what? It was worth it. The sacrifice was worth it. Therefore I would do it again. And, that, and God's going to get me through this. And so, um, you know, that was a really dark and, and difficult time. And I felt very lost. My marriage was really struggling. Our, our son was not sleeping. Um, and you know, I, I had many times that I thought about killing myself Mm -hmm. and I thought about, um, I mean, I, I was, I felt truly abandoned and it's funny after the books come out and I've done all these like different speaking gigs and like people have heard my story, how many people from my team have reached out to me and apologized for like, Hey, they're like, Hey, I'm really sorry. I abandoned you. And like that, that darkest time in your life, it's like, Oh, you're not paying me anymore. So now I'm just going to go do my thing. Like, like I was truly alone Yeah, and it sucked. Yeah. Um, And it also, there's also the element of like, that event was my moon. It was like getting to the moon. It was my Mount Everest. It was the, it was the greatest thing that at that time in my life, I thought I could achieve. And I'm like, well, now what the heck am I supposed to do? Sure. But God had a different plan and he began to open up, um, the active duty military, man, and the struggles that they're having. 
and post the vaccine, you know, mandate and losing so many great leaders that got out of the military from that terrible, terrible decision. Sure. And um, post COVID, which just you had soldiers that were locked down for over a year in their barracks, like prisoners. They couldn't even go to the gym for a year, dude. Mm -hmm. Insane. hundred percent. And and then every, and all the attacks on our military and God just started opening those doors to minister to those guys and to train those guys. And, and now we've seen hundreds and hundreds of soldiers that are coming to Christ through our ministry. Um, and it's been, it's been an absolute blast and God has, we've chipped away at our debt. Like I said, almost all of it's paid off. Um, and man, God has been, God has been so faithful through all of it. Right. And so I think like, you know, there's, there's been a lot of work that's been done in my heart to, to trust him. Right. Um, but man, he, he came through and here we are, we're on the other side of it. It's really awesome. That's awesome, man. Look, we'll take a quick break, guys. We'll be right back. Keep digging into it. When I reflect on the kind of things that the men who participated in our discipleship masterminds had in the past, I am overwhelmed by the quality of their comments and commitment to each other. Several of the guys commented that this was the most meaningful leadership experience they've encountered, and we even had one man logged into a discipleship mastermind while a hurricane was hitting his house. He was that committed and received that much from his peer group that he didn't want to miss it. Because of this extraordinary commitment and because it's a true gift and pleasure, we made them a core part of our community and we hope you might join us. We sit up men with their own peer advisory group of seven individuals that meet every other week for 12 weeks. Each member shares areas they want to focus on, such as improving their prayer life, being more intentional with their wives, or maybe shedding a few extra pounds. Together, we help them strategize, make commitments, find accountability, and learn. It's been our experience that most guys want a community of trustworthy men to share their ideas and create support for each other with. And it's been our experience that most men don't either create this for themselves or seek them out. So we do this because we want you to have that in your life. And all that is needed to begin winning is you. If this sounds interesting, check out our community to see the dates and times of when these different groups meet. Visit thelionwithin.us to start your free trial of our community to get started today. That's the lionwithin.us, and I would love to see you lean in and tap into the power of our discipleship masterminds. Man, I got to ask you, man. I mean, this is, you know, you hear about the, the, the impact, obviously, that the festival had. Lots of money that was raised, and you were left holding this bill. There's people yep. out there that are going to listen to this because we'll probably we'll make some shorts and we'll put them out there on YouTube that are going to be like, uh, well, wait a minute. This guy said that he had this vision from God. Yeah, he's left holding this bill. So God didn't bless it financially. So yeah. how can he say it's a blessing? And I mean, because you see like some of these mega churches and these, it's happening all over where these church, these guys are falling down. And, and, yeah. and but they're seemingly God's blessing them financially. Why wouldn't he do it for you? And. I don't know if you yeah. struggle with that or thought about it, but I'm just curious what's your take, what your answer would be to somebody who, who thinks that right now. Yeah. Um, so what I would say to that is I have had to reckon that I had a way that I wanted this to work. Okay. okay? And what I mean by that is I had a vision that if we could execute that event and do it well and profit money off it based on the financial model that we could go and do more of them around the country. Okay. And I was willing to do anything that it took, spend any amount of money to make that model happen. Okay. And it wasn't God's plan. And there were several times throughout that process where he was putting it on my heart to focus in other areas. Okay. And I wouldn't mm. listen. Got it. I, I had a way that I wanted this to happen. And it was the most stubborn I've ever been of this is going to work come hell or high water. Mm -hmm. And hell or high water came. Right. 
Okay. And so, and so what I would say to that is God was still faithful. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to learn a very, very hard lesson and get humbled beyond imagination of listening to him and trusting him and leading him to him throughout the process. I also, you know, there were decisions that were made financially where I, I made the decision based on our success. Like I can pay for this because this is going to be successful and you, you can't plan that way. Sure. You have, you have to spend based on what you have and be wise with what you have because you don't know if something's going to come or not. You can't count chickens until they've hatched. And I was counting chickens based on how they hatch. And so I could have, I could have cut, I mean, even off the top of my head without even going through the budget, at least $750,000 off that top line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would have been half of my debt. Right. Right. Um, but I trusted people. I trusted the process. You know, I trusted other leaders in their experiences and what needed to take place. Um, and that was a mistake. Mm. I learned a valuable lesson in <clears throat> not everyone has your best interests at hand. We live in an incredibly selfish world and you can trust people. But as Ronald Reagan said, you have to verify. Amen. Trust, <clears throat> but verify. I think I say that weekly. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now even with my team that's regrowing and, you know, we're up to eight uh, people now, you know, I, tr I trust them, but I verify everything right it's good leadership. and we have yeah yep yeah. and we have and it's it's not easy but right. we have the systems and processes for the financial you know um the word i'm looking for is um for the financial responsibility and accountability right that's good stewardship um, yeah it's good stewardship but also you know i trust people but i don't mm. i trust god Right. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. But I don't, I don't see anywhere in the word word where it's, uh, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not a theologian, but where it says inherently trust people. Mm. Mm -hmm. It says to be wise as a serpent. Right. And as innocent as a dove, not gentle as a dove, as innocent as a dove. Like we're called to be spotless and blameless, but we're called to be as wise as serpents. Right. And people like all fraud, like anything that's going to destroy your life is probably going to come through a person. Satan uses people to bring destruction. That's right. Um, that's right. And so, so that's, that's, that's taught me just a lot of, a lot of wisdom. And on, on Saturday night, when they asked me, you know, what are you proud of? And I was like, dude, I'm growing in wisdom. I'm not the same fool that I was. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of, I've made a lot of foolish decisions. Mm -hmm. And even now how I'm leading the people that I have hired, I'm not managing, I'm not doing it the same way that I used to do it. Right. They are not doing me a favor by being a part of my organization. They're accountable to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And for so, so long in my life, I would be like, people are doing me a favor by being a part of this. No, they're adults. They've made their own choices. Right. There's no favors being done here. You're a part of this. You're accountable to your time, your talents, what you've done. This is the expectation and it's excellence and anything less, you're, you're not going to be a part of this. We'll find someone else. Man. Well, let's hear about it. I mean, what is the mission now? How, what, how are you going about serving? Because you, you got me. I'm on the edge, man. I, I can't wait to hear what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. So we, um, we've been given an incredible blessing in to train soldiers, uh, in emotional intelligence. We have a massive issue with young people today and their lack of emotional resiliency. Sure. Uh, which a lot of it has to do with the cell phone. I would say majority. Yeah. Um, um, your average 18 year old has about the emotional development of a 15 or 16 year old due to the lack of emotional connection and social interaction that is developed uh, in normal harmony without a phone, add the phone. People aren't having the human to human reactions that uh, connections that they need to have in order to develop that. So, um, in that context, um, we go and we train soldiers in emotional intelligence to help them learn how they can navigate in a healthy way, their emotions and make good decisions. Um, and this is a massive need because there's been three suicides in the last three weeks up in Alaska. Mm. and the basis up there wow okay we have a massive we have an epidemic we have a massive massive problem with young people today and their resiliency and how they make decisions we truly do i mean i haven't mentioned to you we in the lion we get together every daily but we have a yeah. big bible study on thursday night and we had a uh a army ranger just got out just i think within the last week just got out 
And I mean, it wasn't a talking off the ledge moment, but it was definitely close where this guy was, mm-hmm. he was, he was struggling with his, with his identity. I mean, some real raw conversation around yeah. what he found fulfillment in. And and when you're doing stuff as an army Rangers, you're doing some, some, some pretty heavy stuff. And, you yeah. know, uh, that looks down, that can be looked down upon by so many people, but we have to remember that he's doing it for his country. And man, it was, uh, yeah. so hats off to you because the stats are, alarming and we need some intentional people leaning in here. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a huge, that's a huge piece of our ministry. And then we invite soldiers to stick around and just to hear about our faith. And that is where we share our testimony and what Jesus has done in our lives. And it's just a simple story. Hey, this is what Jesus has done in our lives. And if you're interested in connecting with that more, send us a text message. Okay. Um, and then they text in and then the follow up begins. So is it like group meetings you guys are getting or is it one on one individuals? No, it's, it's, it's like trainings of 50 to 100 people. Oh, wow. Um, and then we'll invite them, you know, to Bible studies, invite them into mentorship, invite them into worship nights. And then that's all through the chapel. And then that's where the real ministry takes place. And we've seen hundreds and hundreds of soldiers now come to Christ and uh, are getting discipled. Um, lives are being transformed through the, the work of the gospel. Um, and we're, we're multiplying that model now to the two bases in Alaska. You have, uh, Fort Wainwright as well as Fort, uh, J joint base Elmendorf Richardson. Those two bases, we're expanding to those two bases here in the fall. So, okay. So you're going straight to the bases themselves for this ministry. Oh, well, this is all on base, all on base, in person, mm-hmm. on base. Got it. Okay. So this is not a working through churches. You're working directly with the bases and directly. Yeah. Okay. With commanders. Yep. Yeah. So with my previous experience in the military, um, you know, I, I know how all this stuff works and how, you know, all the pieces come together sure. and able to build some really key relationships to get into and on, onto the posts. That's super cool. Okay. So uh, man, now that that's awesome. So you're in two right now, you said? We're in one. We're growing to three this fall. To three this fall. Wow. Yep. Okay. And it's our goal to put this on every major base in the country. Incredible. Incredible. Mm-hmm. So how are you using the book now to with with that? Is it does it come along with it? Do they get copies of the book? Or is this something? Yeah. So every soldier who becomes a part of what they're doing, they get a free copy of the book. And so anyone who supports the book, purchases it, all that kind of stuff, like you are supporting this direct ministry towards soldiers and getting it in their hands. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Now, kind of getting to the book, too. You got 12 chapters here. What was the hardest one to write? Just curious. Um, probably engaging, probably engaging freedom. Freedom. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about, you know, where true freedom comes from, because I think I still, you know, we all Satan's trying to tempt us every single day. 100%. Right. Um, and so writing a chapter on freedom when you're still battling for freedom you know, I think is a, is a real thing. And I think, you know, um, again, I'm coming back to like, Jesus is looking, he's not looking for perfect. He's looking for people that are in the fight, right. That are fighting it, that haven't given into it. And so let's take pornography. Let's look over the last month. Um, I'm not giving you a license to sin. Like, don't hear me. I'm not, I'm not apostasy here. Right. But if you are not living in pornography every day of your life, and there are times where you're tempted and you're turning it down and you're turning to Jesus and you are fighting through this. Even if you've fallen in the last month, dude, you're doing it. Jesus is proud of you. Like you're in the fight, stay mm-hmm. in the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's a big difference between someone who's just given into their alcoholism and is slipping up from time to time as they're going to meetings and they're setting up accountability and they're in their word and they're getting after it. Those, those are two different kinds of people. And I believe Jesus is looking for people. You know, I, I remember uh, one night where we were doing a ministry night on base and one of the guys there, this kid is just a fireball, like on fire for Christ, going to set the world on fire. He goes, he goes downtown on Saturday nights with another ministry and like, you know, witnesses to people. The kid's just on fire for Christ. And, and he was there and he just wasn't himself and he just seemed disconnected and whatever. And, you know, I finally got, got, you know, got some time with him and he's like, dude, I'm just struggling with porn. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> So let's pray for that. And then let's get over it and start a new day and get back on the field. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Okay. So you're human. Cool. Check. So prayed over him and then the Holy spirit touches him. And then before you know it, he's walking around and he's praying for people. And like, there was another guy there and I look over and he's just passionately praying for this guy. And it's like, that is the picture of spiritual warfare. Right. Satan is like, this is not, this is not, um, you know, the issue is not how God is looking down on you and going, oh, okay, I'm now going to bless or I'm going to like, you know, be involved in your life. No, it says this is a war for the soul of the world 
and that we have sons and daughters that are dying regularly and that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy is trying to get us into a place where we are not engaged. He's trying to disengage us so that he can get us out of the fight. So that young man that night was disengaged. The enemy was working and using the tool of pornography. Another warrior comes, prays for him, as other men have done for me, uh, prays for him, uses the power of the Holy Spirit, gets the demonic influence off his life. Now he's out back on the field engaging in war. And it's like, that, that's it. That's all it is. And, and I think so much of, of ministry today is guys that are just working through all their stuff and trying to forgive themselves. And it's like, dude, forgive yourself, pray with someone, move on, and let's go. get on the field, make disciples, share the gospel, get involved with other people, get back into the game and get out of the disengaged state that is actually like eating at your soul and robbing you of the destiny God has for your life. I think disengage for me when I hear when you went through that, I think a lot of guys take that disen they get disengaged because they condemn themselves. And when we condemn yeah. ourselves, we're not fit for use. And that's why Romans 8 1, therefore now there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. We have to that's something I have to tell myself probably an average of ten times a day. Just yeah. because you know, when I feel like I'm not fit for use, I'm no good, or I'm defined by how I spoke to my wife or how I treated my kids or something like that. And obviously I'm a sucky dad. And then I'll forget all the hundred things I did prior. I'm just going to focus on the one negative, just like that guy with that night. And he needs someone like you. And, and I need guys in my life to just, hey, hit him with the hard truth, snap them back and just remember that you are not condemned. That is not what it is to be following a follower of Christ. So, man, hats off to yeah. you for that. Yep, dude, you're good. Let's go. That's it, brother. That's it, man. This is powerful stuff. So, I mean, I, I love the book. I, obviously, we're going to be putting that out there for you. But before we wrap up, let's play. We always we always do a lightning round at the end of our show. Uh, just okay. some quick, fun questions to uh, just have a little bit of fun here towards the end. Okay, let's do it. All right, man. What's uh, so it can't be it can't be working out or hunting. So, what's another hobby? Something you enjoy doing for fun? We'll take those two off the table because we know we know those already. Oof. What do I do for fun? Other than working out or hunting <laughs> <laughs> or football. Uh, golly, man. Um, I mean, I do enjoy reading. I'm reading a book right now um, about the sinking of the Indianapolis and how all those guys went into the water. And it was like the biggest shark attack. Yeah. I think it was like 1,300 men went into the water and like 300 came out. Like over 1,000 were eaten by sharks. Oh, my gracious. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I, I do enjoy to read. Nick. I know that's not as much. I know that's not that much fun. But yeah, I think reading is fun. There you go. I do too. I'm a big reader. Big reader. Yeah. How about uh, favorite food, man? Oh, favorite food is for sure Mexican. I could eat Mexican food every day of the week. Yep. I'm Done. with you. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think it's, it's, it's better than anything American. Any kind of cuisine. French, Mexican's the best. My wife and I probably eat it twice a week. Easily, easily. Yeah, easily. It, it, it's always on our menu all, all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. How about the uh, superpower? If there was a superpower out there that that you could get and you could use, which which one would it be, and how would you use it? Uh, I would. I would want to be able to fly, so that I wouldn't have to deal with traffic. <laughs> That's right, man. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Well, that's that's usually where I feel like the evil one's the closest to me is when I'm, when I'm behind the wheel of my car. So, you know, there you go. So, I, yeah, I, I have you to also have it. to have that like that Superman strength where like you can pick stuff up while you fly. I need that one at the same time, too. <laughs> that would make my wife happy because I could just pick up her car, fly to the next location and then we're good. There you go. What's yeah. your what about your all time favorite movie, man? Oh, dude, Braveheart. Oh, nice without a question nice there is no there's no movie that makes me cry every time than braveheart there you go bro and uh do you even get emotional just thinking about it like i love when uncle argyle comes along young you know um um william wallace and says it's our wits that make us men mm -hmm. oh so good like I'm going to teach you to use this before I teach you to use the, s the sword. That's it. That's before it. Before I teach you to use this. That's right. Because it's our wits that make us men. Oh, I could just sit with that for an hour. It's so beautiful. Love it. Love it. Yeah. When you think back to the last year, Ben, what did you spend too much time doing? Listening to podcasts about the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> 
<laughs> Please, you're honest about it, bro. Dude, I'm shameless. I shameless. Yep, I'm a degenerate fan. Like I just love it. It's <laughs> it's it's one of the things that I just and what, what's funny about it is Minnesota's never won a Super Bowl, right? And so there's this cult. There's this cult like culture that's created this phrase of before I die, I just want to see the Vikings win a Super Bowl. And we have the most heartbreak losses. We've lost four Super Bowls. Like we we've had way more heartbreaks than the bills have like NFC championships. We should have won the Brett Favre year, the 1998, all that kind of stuff. So like, there's just this culture on before I die and it's created these just warriors of like, before we die, they're going to win a Super Bowl, and everyone's so passionate about it. So it's, it's kind of one of my just like fun forms of entertainment. Right. Right. That I, that I'll kind of, enjoy when i'm when i want just a mental break from things <laughs> i find if i I think it's better than sitting and scrolling on social media so there you go 100 100 what about something man we, we we like to be authentic and you definitely have been here is there anything that you're currently struggling with that you like to share with our listeners uh probably anger mm. yeah you know i've gotten pretty angry in the last like you know a uh, few weeks especially learning how to how to parent a two-year-old that right. can get pretty frustrating um, and so that's, that's an area where, um, you know, I'm really kind of meditating on how, uh, anger is coming from a place of not feeling powerful and anger makes you feel powerful. Sure. Um, and so when you're, you know, not agreeing with your wife or your son's out of control, or you feel like you're not leading well, like anger can make you feel like you're taking back that power, but it's actually making things worse. Sure. Um, so that, that's an area that I'm struggling with and putting more time and attention to of like, Hey, how do I, how do I manage these emotions a little bit better? Love it. Love it, man. That's that's being real right there. That's real. So when you think about God, what's your favorite thing about him? Um man, that he he continues to show up and bless me with his presence when I don't deserve it. Mm. And that he man, that he's just so faithful. Mm. He's so faithful. And and he's blessed me more than I deserve. Yeah, dude, he's he's such a faithful God, and he doesn't keep score. Amen to that. Let's yeah. let's flip it one eighty. Least favorite thing about the evil one. Oh man, um, probably that he he is um, how he's used sexual perversion mm. to just assault the minds of men. Mm-hmm. And like even just the desensitization of how women dress today. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're basically naked. Yep. They they have skin suits on. Yep. And dude, that's really hard. Yep. That's really hard. And, and, you know, even in Jesus's time, he talked about not lusting and dude, those girls, you couldn't see anything, mm-hmm. you know, they were covered. Right. And they still struggle with lust then. Like, I, I just think there's so much grace for guys today. And then now how accessible pornography is. Oh yeah. On the, on the phone. Yep. And in a second, dude, you can be sleeping with whoever you want mm-hmm. and it's just going to keep getting worse. Yeah. And I think that, and how that's assaulting our kids, um, man, it sucks. And I just, I hate that he's been able to do that. Oh. that. That sucks. And it feels, yeah, very defeating. It does. It does, brother. Well, man, last question in the lightning round man, is what do you hope the listeners remember the most from our conversation today? Um, don't waste your time on sports podcasts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I, I felt, I feel like the, what my, what's in my spirit right now and that we've kind of talked about, um, God's not looking for perfection, but he's looking for a majority. Mm. Can you make the majority of your time and the majority of your life where you're seeking him, you're listening, you're reading the word, um, you're overcoming the temptations for pornography. Um, you're not giving in to sin constantly um but you're you're getting a majority um and you're continuing to take take new ground i think that that is a big a big thing that i want guys to to rest in and to be proud of um you know i remember one time i was with a guy and you know i've struggled pretty heavily with lust throughout my life and i remember i was sitting with him and and i said dude i just want to like celebrate uh with you uh, i haven't masturbated in a week mm-hmm. and uh his eyes <laughs> you can tell this guy did not struggle with lust at right. all because you could see with his entire body language his disgust slash like blown away 
that that that's a victory for me, mm-hmm. but his voice saying, wow, man, I really want to j- rejoice with you in that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, in that, in that setting for me, that was an enormous victory. Yeah. Like I was, I was taking ground in my life. I mean, I, I, I would, you know, masturbate like two to four times a day as a kid, you right. know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, that's where like, dude, I want, I want guys to feel God's grace for wherever you are in the journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that you're not who you were. I'm not the same guy I was 10 years ago and neither are you bro. Right. And so Thank give God. yourself some grace, continue, continue to advance. Know that the enemy's just trying to disarm you from advancing the kingdom and, uh, and continue, just keep going. Keep going. Amen, brother. Well, man, where do you want to point the listeners at to connect with you, your ministry, get your book? And we'll make sure you give you give you a place here to, to share share all those those resources. Yeah. So you can just go to engageyourdestiny.org and check out the work we're doing with the military. And, and that'll point you to places where you can get the book. Um, also, uh, that has all our social handles. So okay. um, if you want to follow what we're doing, it's Engage Your Destiny. Just type that into your Instagram or your uh, we're big on um, Instagram and Facebook. Those are kind of the big ones um, to really follow what God's doing. Um, but would love for you guys to subscribe uh, on the website. And so that you can get updates of how we're advancing the kingdom and launching more bases and watching soldiers lives transform. We'd love to run with you guys and, and build a relationship. That's incredible. We'll make sure that stuff is synced up in the show notes for you listeners out there. So man, anything else you'd like to share with us today, man, just thanks for having me on. It was an honor. Honor to have you on, sir, man. Hope you have a great day. Thank you, sir. All right, so stop that. Start your day with a spiritual boost with our daily spiritual kickoff. This is your daily dose of inspiration and connection with the lion within us. The Daily SKO is now free, giving you a powerful taste of our community. Each morning, receive a focused spiritual message that sets the tone for your day. It's your daily call to action and it's happening live. It's designed to equip you with the strength and wisdom you need to face whatever comes your way. So whether you're new to our community or just need a daily reminder of God's Word, the Daily SKO is your gateway to a deeper spiritual journey. Join us today and start your mornings with purpose. Visit thelionwithin.us to get started. That's thelionwithin.us. We are leaning in to help you be the leader God intends you to be. All right, guys. So that was a fun, that was a fun one. Hopefully you enjoyed that with, with Ben. Definitely encourage you to go check out his book. Go check out everything he's doing at Engage Your Destiny. The, the ministry there makes an impact. I mean, we had some good sidebar conversations before and after recording that hopefully, uh, you know, that, that I'm just, I'm very encouraged by what he's doing and how he's leaning in. And obviously God is blessing it. So uh, what do you think about the question for the, of the week this week? I want you to think about what does sin mean? What does that mean for your destiny? Right. If, if God, if you're truly saying send me, what does it mean? Now for Ben, this is starting in, engage your destiny for me. It's starting out the line within us and being very intentional about discipleship for Christian men and leaning into that. What is it for you? Because once you figure out what that is, you're going to have a new fire. Now, because I can tell you right now, one thing, guys, putting out a show three times a week, running a community, all the events we have going on the farm, it can wear you down. But I know it's what God's called me to do. And usually what I get off track is when I start deviating and try to do it my way. So if I stay focused on discipleship for Christian men, helping Christian men be the leaders that God intends us to be, I know one thing, he's going to bless it. He is because I'm leaning into to my, to his calling on my life. You have to do that yourself. So think about, send me. What is that going to impact you? And then what is he nudging you and trying to tell you to do that you keep resisting? Stop the resistance, lean in, make it happen. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Share this out, particularly share this out with buddies out there who have served in the military. Maybe they're former military or they're currently serving. These types of conversations, these types of resources are important. And we have to be super intentional about putting this in front of them. So just hit the, the share button on your phone, send it out, send a text message or an email, whatever's easiest for you. Just put this in front of others. And also that's the way we grow the show. You know, we, we grow the show by sharing, by asking you to share it. That's it. 
you know, we're not doing big ads or, or we don't have the, the funding to do things like that. So we just do it's word of mouth. What's organic? And by golly, that's the best way because God's hand is on it right now. OK, you could give us a rating and review that helps big time or you could come in and be a donor. We would definitely just genuinely uh, appreciate you coming on to be a donor of the show. We have monthly donors. You can be a one time donor or whatever works for you. But just if you like what we're doing, if you like the message, if you like the, the consistency that we're putting out to really just try to serve and encourage Christian men to be the leaders God has intended them to be, support the show. It takes a lot of work to do this. All right. So guys, again, the lionwithin.us is how you can connect with our resources, our community. Jump on the community. Join it for free. Start your 30-day free trial. Get started in there right now. I guarantee if you lean in and actually engage it, thinking on our, our theme of this week, it will bless you mightily. Because I've seen it bless so many men out there. And it's uh it's all God. He gets all the glory. And we want him to be honored and glorified in all that we do. So thank you so much. Come back on Friday. We'll have some fun Friday tips for you guys out there, uh, as well as just a couple of dad jokes to get you going. And uh, thank you again for just being a supporter of the show, for listening, and just for taking the time to hang out with us. All right. So have a great day. Get after it. And keep unleashing the lion within.